right, good morning. We'll, uh, we'll get started here. Um, first and foremost, uh, welcome and thank you for uh, showing up this cold Saturday morning uh, to hear what our team uh, is doing and sharing your ideas and vision for the use of center school building and property. So um, I'd like to thank the Hopkins Senior Center uh, and its staff for allowing us to use the facility this morning. I'd like to thank HCAM TV and their team who is taping this morning event. Uh, so people who couldn't attend will be able to see it on HCAM. And they're also providing the audio uh, uh, amplification for us this morning so you can hopefully hear what I'm saying. Um, also, I'd like to thank Elaine Lazarus, Director of Land Use and Town Operations, and her team for preparing all the materials that we have for this event. A uh, little background, our team was appointed by the Board of Selectmen in June of 2017. My name's Rick Flannery. I'm the chair of the team. Um, with us is Ken Weissmantle, the vice chair. Uh, Darlene Hayes, who is with us today. Uh, John Pavlov, uh, those are the appointed members, along with Laura Barry, who can't be here today. She um, is home nursing an illness. Um, other members of the team uh, who were appointed as liaisons from the, uh, from the town boards and committees are Claire Wright from the Board of Selectmen. Um, Jen Devlin from the school committee who's being represented today by uh, Nancy Cavanaugh. Uh, Frank Durso from the planning board and Amy Ritterbush who is also from the planning board as an alternate member. Michael Owen from the Hopkins and Historic District Commission and Robert Dubinsky from the Parks and Recreation Commission. Um, we're gonna start off this morning with a presentation that will give an overview of center school and what we have done so far as, as a team. After that, we'll have an opportunity for you to share your thoughts, ideas, and vision for the use of the center school building and grounds. Um, the team envisions this first public forum as a brainstorming opportunity and asks that you feel free to share any idea that you have. Feel free to pose any questions that you have at the time, but please understand we may not have specific answers, especially related to costing at, at this time, as that is likely to be driven by what the team starts to look at as future uses after getting your vision. When we go to public input and question stage, we'd ask that you go to a microphone, state your name, address, and affiliation if that's important. Uh, the microphones are amplifying and recording, so sp please speak directly into the microphone. After the public comments, we'll have a public forum criteria exercise that we'll give out and explain. And now I'm going to have to, I'm sorry, now I'm going to hand it over to John Pavlov, who's going to take us through the PowerPoint uh, presentation. John? Thank you, Rick. Good morning. I'm John Pavlov, I'm 15 Act Street. So um, this is the agenda. It, it, it may not take that amount of time but we allowed for an ample amount of time um, introduction which uh, was just done we'll go over the, uh, I like the fact that we're CS rats by the way um, <laughs> center school reuse ad advisory team um, we're gonna do a virtual tour um, talk a little bit about the decision criteria that we've been using to date our public involvement um, potential uses and um, open discussion and exercise, which is really the, the, the heart of this. And then a quick summary at the end. So the center school reuse advisory team will recommend for the Board of Selectmen's consideration a plan for the center school building and property that will provide the board with valuable outside viewpoints on the use and development of the property. This plan shall outline the community's vision, and I think that's the important word, community's vision, for the future of the property and produce recommendations for the board's considerations that align with the aspirations of the community. Uh, know who the members are at this point, and getting a little deeper into the charge from the selectmen, make recommendations to the board of selectmen regarding the design of an interactive public process. This is step one of the public process. Guide creation of plan for the Skinner School building and grounds. Ensure that the plan reflects the community's aspirations. Provide an assessment of the broader neighborhood context and the appropriateness of particular uses given the site, quality of life, and visual characteristics of the area valued by the community. Um, I know all, you know, 
um, the the building it's a historical building it's right on the common um, you know it's certainly an asset to the town uh, create recommendations that serve as an invaluable outside resource to the board throughout the decision making process gather input from a broad base of citizens by reaching out to the community through a community visioning, um, visioning workshop and by conducting focus groups and surveys uh, all of which are underway hopefully you know, people have seen the surveys in the Hopkinton Independent, online, et cetera. And uh, conduct public education and outreach on the planning process is our final step. So center school tour. Um, you know, everybody in the room, I'm, I'm pretty sure is familiar with center school. But this is the plot plan. It's located within the historical district. Um, here's the common. The front of the school is right there. There's, this is a slightly dated um, uh, chart or graph, but there's now uh, the ability to get to the, the back lot. That used to be a, a, an issue. Um, the building is 52,000 square feet, and the lot size is 11.7 acres. And just for point of reference, um, this is the easement um, where the gas lines run. Yeah. Electric lines. Electric. Electric lines, thank you. So here's the building layout. So the original building is this section right here. And it was built in 1928. In 1950, this section, this um, uh, addition, and this, the office, the school office, for anyone who's ever been in the building, those were new additions in 1950. So that was part of the 1950s <laughs> renovation. And then in 1986, six classrooms were added and the gym. So if anybody who's had kids play in the basketball program is probably familiar with the gym. So here's some exterior views. Um, front of the building um, from Ash Street. Um, this is the addition that uh, was highlighted in the last graphic. Again, this is the left side from Ash Street, the northwest side of the building. Um, oops. So again, the addition and looking all the way back um, to the field behind the school. And here you can see the 1986 addition this is the 1950s edition, and this is the original part of the building. Same view, but from the other side of uh, the looking down. Um, I noticed Del Rogers is here, this area here, the guys who plow affectionately refer to as the cove. Um, so this is the cove uh, with the indent. Um, cafeteria is right here. There's an entrance right here. And this is just the back corner of the gym. And I apologize for the uh, back photos. It was, the sun was setting as you could see. In a, but this is the back of the building. The new classrooms and the gym sticks out right here. Here is uh, the playground. And again, you can see the back of the building. So now we're inside. Um, classrooms are roughly 900 square feet. So there's a number of classrooms. Um, some smaller ones are 600 square feet. Um, on average though, I'd say they're about 900 square feet for a classroom. So this is just showing an example of a, a couple of uh, the classrooms in, laid out, as you can see, um, somewhat differently. This is the uh, cafeteria, um, which also has a kitchen. Um, for those of you who participated in you know, the marathon school and the, the selection of the new school, part of the reason was um, center school. These are both undersized for what's state now requirements for a, uh, a pre preparation kitchen as well as a cafeteria. Same with the classrooms, they're um, a bit undersized. The gym um, and uh, the physical therapy room right next to it, those are both located in, um, as 
the the new section, the 1980 um, edition, 86 edition. So this just gives you an idea looking down um, the hallway. And um, this is from the front all the way to the back. And here's just one of the front stairwells. Um, one of the interesting things about participating in this is listening to people who went to center school, you know, back back in the day, um, who talked about doing the before the gym was built that their physical education was running up and down the stairs. <laughs> so, a um, couple of things to note: when if you looked at the front part of the building, um, the let's call it the third floor or the second floor if we refer to it as a basement, it's not accessible. Um, it's not ADA accessible. The bulk of the building is, but that one section is not. And this is the new elevator in the back, and it's you know, um, what we'd all consider an elevator. Um, this is the elevator in the front, um, so you would enter in through the cove, that entrance, and you're able to um, use this elevator to get to the second floor. So moving on to the next section, which is the decision criteria. Um, how do we weigh the choices? So fit in the neighborhood. Um, those of you who went to the um, Main Street downtown um, um, revitalization or uh, project the other night. Um, parking was first and foremost in a lot of people's mind. So something that would um, improve off street parking and traffic, serve a need for the town. Um, as Rick said, you know, we haven't really started to determine costs and such, but this would economically con convert the school what needs to be done. There's been no, numerous studies done on the schools over the years. Um, uh, you know, heating, um, uh, electronics, um, wires, for instance. I didn't point it out in the hallway, but up in the right-hand corner where all the internet connections are running in the hallway, as opposed to, you know, normally that would be in a, a, a drop ceiling or um, uh, there'd be allowances. In a, in a newer building for that. Um, preserve the 1928 historic uh, facade facing the town common. The value of the site and building to the town is beyond the monetary uh, value realized by a potential sale. Um, minimize the timeline for reuse to reduce the vacancy time. So, you know, that may be with a temporary use, maybe um, best is a permanent use if we can get to it, but a temporary use, um, because as everyone knows, uh, an, an unoccupied building doesn't get better. Um, you know, they tend, um, issues start to pop up when buildings are unoccupied and not used. So, public involvement. Public forums, thank you for coming, you're at the first. Um, there'll be a second public forum where we're going to narrow down uh, the ideas for reuse. So this is the broad brainstorming one um, combined with the surveys. Uh, the third public forum um, will be final recommendations if we can get there. And the fourth public forum if needed, you know, we'll have a, a fourth one if, if required. So the public is invited and encouraged to partic participate. We have a regular at least once a month meeting. Um, anyone's free to come in and offer their ideas. And we're really trying hard to open communications with residents, press, community groups, etc. You know, um, transparently conduct the entire um, process. So electronic and paper surveys are available to all residents. Um, we have uh, paper ones here if anyone needs. At the end, we'll show you how to fill it out on the, the town website. Town social media, the Facebook page, Twitter, um, et cetera. Uh, HKM show, um, this will be on HKM. You know, we may do a call-in show on HKM. Uh, the monthly press release um, to all the relevant, you know, local media. Report on progress to the town meeting, an annual report, and 
you know, we'll provide regular, and we have been, uh, updates to the uh, Board of Selectmen. Which brings us to potential uses. So we broke it down into three priorities. Uses that serve the town needs. Um, town needs can be implemented by a town meeting vote in a board, town board or department. So um, some, for example, something that we may be doing today and paying rent, if we renovated center school, you have the potential of moving that office into center school, a town office into center school. Uses that serve uh, the town partnership is our second priority and implemented by partnering with another organization. It, that's gonna take a little more effort and decisions by the partner and it will also require uh, town meeting approval. And then the third priority, um, disposition of uh, the property. So disposing of it um, by a town meeting and then a buyer found in a uh, public bidding process. So that would be um, not a town or a partnership use, but something like um, senior housing. Well, actually, that's not a good example. Something like condos. So from priority one, town needs, school administration office space. Um, that would eliminate the office space rental that we're doing today, uh, and move it in. Parks and Rec office space, um, again, that would eliminate some uh, rent that we're doing today. Office space for other town departments, so relocate some of the town departments into center school. Community center or after school care, um, town record storage, and town committee meeting rooms. So uh, uh, some additional priority one needs, uh, life skills program using the kitchen and the gym. Uh, the gym use as a gym gymnasium or you know, possibly uh, a large auditorium for, uh, for something that would not fit into the, uh, the new library, for instance, in the new meeting room in the library. A trail connection, Upper Charles River Trail, and I did not point out on one of the diagrams, but behind, to the right of the um, playground, there's the start of a path that actually will take you um, um, quite a bit into the woods, take you all the way back to Legacy Farms on horse trails, and the Boy Scouts have built a bridge um, if you go to the right, and it'll take you um, back behind Abbott Farm. And I recommend that one. There's a little waterfall if it's not frozen. Um, so a trail connection for uh, Upper River, um, Charles River Trail. Marathon Days activities, you know, um, they use it to stage um, um, runners every year. A space for library access materials, a neighborhood playground, and then you know, potentially public parking. Uh, school bus parking was something else that came up. Um, we pay to keep our buses, I believe, in Ashland. So the potential of having, um, using it for school bus parking and storage for building supplies and garage space for the facilities department. So just brainstormed on a bunch of priority one ideas. So priority two, um, Again, the partnership ideas. <coughs> Youth center, HCAM studio, senior housing, fitness facility, meeting space for um, community organizations, you know, the Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, the Hopkinton Running Club, um, et cetera. Donation storage to support, uh, space to support charities, you know, potentially even Mass Bay community um, um, college classes. <coughs> In priority three, sale for redevelopment is housing. Um, a zoning change may be required if we do that. Sale for office space or retail development, if we decided as a town to do that, that would also require a, um, that would require a zoning change. Um, potentially reuse as a school again, a charter school. And uh, de demolition of the building additions. Um, in other words, retain the historic building but remove the two buildings in back and you'll potentially use that as uh, additional parking or um, uh, whatever use, including land bank banking the property for future needs. And this was something that was done um, from the library's work. Um, so at one point, 
the library was considering occupying Center School. Um, and when they did that, they it came up with something that I thought was fairly novel. This is the historic part of the building. And then they added an addition to it. Then they separated the two buildings and ended up with two um, buildings. This included some of the 1950s um, edition, but all of the 1986 edition. Another potential would be remove all the 1950s edition, and then you would have two buildings, one in the front here, one in the back, potential for parking um, would, would greatly be expanded at that point, as well as I think it would help uh, the, the traffic flow. But, you know, a thinking outside the box idea in a sense, um, rather than looking at it as one big building, you know, the potential of looking at it as two smaller buildings. Which brings us to open discussion and exercise. So uh, this is the, the main part of the meeting. And Rick, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you. So the, uh, the next part is um, reaching out to you uh, and seeing what your visions are for the building and what uh, thoughts, ideas, questions that you may have. Um, assisting in that process is the, um, it's gonna be the vice chair who's gonna uh, scribe down some of the items on a flip chart and um, Darlene's gonna um, assist in anybody that you know, wants to come up and has any questions and um, so. We'll go on to that next phase, and we're, we're hoping you have some ideas for us, and um, we'll share them with us at this point. You can just say um, where you live. Sure. And, uh, Hi, everyone. My name is Mark Steffen. I'm at 18 Granite Street in Hopkinton. Um, not affiliated with any particular organization for the for the uh, for this discussion. Although, as a Cub Scout leader, I would appreciate the space for that. Um, personally, uh, again, first of all, I want to thank the team for all the work that you've done on this. I think this is a great opportunity for the town to be a, to have some space that we can then decide what to do with instead of vice versa, where we need space and we've got a and we've got a need. Um, Similar to Technicopia in Worcester, I would like to offer the option to use some of this space for a maker space where people can get together, where they can have equipment uh, available not only for students, but also for entrepreneurs, for people who have an interest in making things, whether or not it's with metal, wood, you know, fabric, whatever you can think of, electronics. Um, I had the, uh, the, uh, the pleasure of, of visiting the makerspace in Worcester before and it was very vibrant the whole families were there the kids were working on stuff the parents were working on stuff and I thought it was a, a really great um, a, um, space to to allow people to come together and you know not only innovate but actually build things that uh, you know that they can use either in entrepreneurship or in their own personal lives um, kind of tied in a little bit with that is the concept of a repair space where you might have people you know you bring in things that aren't working and then you learn how the, how they work and you know somebody there with some expertise is able to help um, help uh, repair that item instead of it just going in the trash um, so anyways those are a couple of thoughts that I uh, I, would, I would appreciate the team giving some time to think about thank you do, do you know who owns that space that particular space in Worcester? Um, it, it's a nonprofit. Um, oh, it I believe it's probably just owned by the space itself. And I could see a similar partnership maybe that we either partner with them or create our own nonprofit to, to help manage the, the site. But yeah, they have classes. They've got you know, experts that come in at a certain time. They have training to use the equipment and you know, certification, membership, all that sort of stuff. Great. Hi, Kevin Shea, 60 Pleasant Street. I just wanted to identify myself as a reporter for the Hopkinton Independent. If you see me taking pictures or something like that, it's not uh, for nefarious reasons. <laughs> and uh, I have no dog in the fight, so just wanted to identify myself. Good morning. Good morning, Kim Hesse, 57 Grove. Thank you very much for all this work you're doing. Um, I'm so excited to see what comes of it. And I'm wondering if the town has been approached by any um, developers with proposals for how to use the, the space. Uh, as of now, no. No, no this, is um, this is still a brainstorming and trying to 
time, and it's all depending on your input. We, um, and then it can go to the selectmen and say, hey, this is what we got back from communities. Uh, from the community, it's also what we got back. A lot that came in from the initial went out to boards and committees that were elected first and their input. And then it goes to the selectmen to say, okay, where are the next steps? My name is Tom Terry, 17 Maple Street. Um, the priorities, I have a question. Uh, priorities one and two deal with um, usage and renovation of the building. And priority three is in a class of the same other two, but they seem to be only priority three would be enacted if priorities one and two weren't. Is that how I should understand it? So priority three is for the more or less the sale or demolition, whatever. Is that true? Yes, uh, and, that, and that comes from input from current so, committees. So that would probably never come to be priority three is, uh, is the way we're looking at it now. It seems as though there's uh, a large demand for space for a lot of uh, town groups. The gymnasium would be utilized, the, the uh, cafeteria could be utilized, and all the other buildings. There's many, many town groups. The town hall is overcrowded. Have you done any study as to how you would replace um, some of the, or move some of the offices from the town hall? And what's the need? What is the capacity of the town hall as to uh, present recommendations? Um, I can speak to that. Uh, the town manager is currently um, conducting a needs assessment and uh, going to be getting back to us, the, the committee and other town boards to basically be able to give us some idea of that. And I think that'll help guide us even more. And to one of your other points, I think everything's on the table. And I, I think that's why we're here, is to hear from the, the public as well, to make sure that, uh, that you know, we hear your point of view. And, you know, I think a lot of this will be obviously driven by costs and, and what it's gonna cost to do things. So while that priority one may be a priority one item, if it's going to be too expensive, you, you may go to priority three. So I wouldn't say I wouldn't say that priority three is off the board. I think you just need to, you know, you need to have those priorities available. Well, to follow that up, uh, the the last slide that we had that showed the library expansion, that that is completely irrelevant at this point because we have a new library, isn't it? Uh, it, it that, I think um, maybe you missed the the point. The point was is to show that we're, we're thinking out of the box and that's one of the ideas the library had and it may be one of the potential ideas that ends up coming before our committee is, is looking at out of the box type ideas where you maintain the, the historic facade and you know even maybe add to that part of the building and the center part of the building becomes a courtyard um, you know, and then you have the back part of the building, which is the newer, more up to date with the gymnasium part. It's like, like we're saying, brainstorming idea. We just kind of threw that out as a idea to you know, to foster some some of that brainstorming, just to say this was an idea that we had in the past. I, yeah. I agree, it's totally relevant to yeah. the library. It was so just showing an idea that had already been thought of. Yeah, it's, it it seems to be muddying the waters if uh, to even even consider it. Um, without a cost estimate, I noticed in your presentation, Rick, you said that uh, in the future years, the group would look at costs as to how they would go forward with the building. I'm a little concerned. I'm, my big concern is September is going to come real soon, and the uh, Marathon School will be open. That building will be no one in it unless we do something. We also have to have plans and uh, prices. Has there been an analysis done, a cost analysis, and uh, by any professional people, such as in town we have uh, an assessor who is a, an appraiser for 20 or 30 years in his, in his business, and uh, we have uh, Mike Shepard and Chuck Cadillac, who I would consider to be three professional experts at our, at our uh, beck and call. And if they were assigned a, a project to go in there and just give us a rough estimate as to what needs to be done, um, 
where they're paid employees, it could be actually hurried along very much, so you could possibly have something ready for September. The way we're moving right now, it doesn't seem as though that building, I can see that building being unoccupied for a couple of years, the way things go, and the way meetings take place, and the way votes and approvals in the state uh, having to get involved, maybe, in some of those situations. So I would suggest that we move that along uh, and find out from Norman, number one, the needs. And this, this study uh, that Norman is going to um, take place in, I can't see that taking more than two hours. He's got the building. He knows all the people. He knows who's cramped. He knows who isn't. <laughs> this isn't this isn't brain science. <laughs> well, I think a part of this assessment does involve some costing as well. So, so I think that's it is being worked on, um, and we are moving on. Just so you know, we do have already provided the board of selectmen with a interim use uh, recommendation, so that the building will not be totally unoccupied and not being just left, you know, um, idle. So I think you'll, you, you've already provided that level of um, uh, detail to the Board of Selectmen for what we think should be going on the minute it becomes mar marathon opens. So we've already got some ideas on that, part, part of which is parks and rec use. Um, so, um, so we've been working with the Parks and Rec Commission with uh, Bob Dubinsky and his team to to start talking about that as well as the town manager. And we are working towards that. And as you know, sometimes these things go a little slower than we'd like and we're trying to move it along. And I think um, when you talked about costs, the school committee has already <coughs> came forward and told us how much, once the building is buttoned up, what the cost is, you know, to keep it safe, um, heated, things like that. So we do have those numbers already. Well, I'm talking about a new windows insulation um, I understand the heating system has, has two boilers in the building. Is that true? In the uh, there's one boiler. There's one boiler? Yes. I thought there were two separate boilers and one of them was... There's, the, a, there's, a, uh, there's a partial heater in the gymnasium area of the uh, 86 building, but the, the building is basically run by one boiler system. And what's the condition of that boiler? Uh, my understanding was replaced 10 years ago, so it's in pretty good shape. Okay. So with we're working through all that at this moment. So you have done some cost estimates. Is that what you just said? We've had we've done we've done basic cost estimates. We got the original well, the I wouldn't call it the original. We got the 10, 2010 estimates to bring it up at the time. So they're being updated as we as we speak. So I mean that's that's part of the that's part of the uh, Who's doing that work? It's through through the town manager's office. I don't know who he's. That's uh, being updated. Yes. It's being studied. Being studied. Yes. Sounds like we got to have a talk with Norman and get things moving. Because otherwise, the building's going to going to be a ghost building. It's going to have broken windows. It's going to have frozen pipes. It's going to have vandalism. We've ar we've already been talking with the facilities director and met with him, mm -hmm. and he's already putting in a plan to keep the building running until a final use has been decided. I know patience is a virtue, but it isn't in this, pl this particular instance. This has to move. It should be, there should be something on the town meeting floor this year that has to do with expenditures. So that we, and I'm talking about large expenditures, which are necessary, because that's a very valuable building. And I think it should get moving so that we, we get things going very quickly. I would, I would recommend that, that you get the costs and the, and the usages from Norman, if you're throwing it back to him. He threw this committee to you, now you're throwing it back to him. Where does it end? Y you know, we need, we need, we need some, uh, the buck stops here, guys. I mean, I think before it can go to, like, the town committee floor and um, have real numbers to it, we ha it has to narrow down from public input of what people want it to become, so that we were able to present to the selectmen saying, here are the top three ideas that came out of the, these forums, the committee forums, and say, okay, because there could be a rambit of a very large gap of what these pricing is. You know, we know that we have the price we can look back on and when center school was being looked at to be refurbished to stay a school. Well, one of the questions to the surveys that I answered them, it was a little bit abrasive maybe to you, but my question, my answer to the question about what the usage of the building should be was how can you ask me that when I don't have any figures? Because if I don't know whether or not the building should be torn down 
or, or used. I, the only way I can make that decision is to get some hard facts. It's what is the cost if we go one way? What is the cost if we go the other way? And I think that's where your committee should be, not in doing surveys. And you have a survey where we got 15 or 20 people show up here today. How many answered your survey? Yeah. Um, we've, we've put, we've, at this point, we've got, uh, as of just this morning when I looked, we've got uh, up to 300 people so far have answered the survey. So, and, and, I, and I, I get your point, Tom, and we, we understand what you're, what you're putting forth. But for us to, we, we designed this survey to be open-ended so that we could get the vision. Then from the vision, you narrow down to the couple of ideas and then provide the costs. And I think that's where the townspeople come in and say, uh, great idea, but costs way too much, or gee, that's just right. So I think we're, we are getting there. Well, we, my point is, as a citizen, and uh, we've known that this was imminent uh, since we started talking about plans for Marathon School, the new elementary down there, uh, the K and K and one. Um, at that date, I'm saying some of this stuff should have been started, and today it hasn't started. We're still talking about I'll get back to Norman. So I think we need more gas on the fire. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Can I, can I just add um, something, going back to Mr. Terry's comments about the showing the library, the possible <laughs> design when the library was looking at it. Um, and it's some, part of the reason that slide was put up was for us all to think a little more out of the box. And what we mean by that is when you look at the, when you look at the building, it's really like three separate buildings that are quite distinct. You have the, the 1928 original building, which is in the historic district, which is really a beloved building by many people. Then you've got the 50s edition, which, you know. Not, not so much beloved. Not so much beloved. <laughs> uh, you know, may, maybe limited reuse. And then the back section is quite new, quite serviceable with the gym. We don't need to look at the whole thing. The library design was a simple demonstration for how you could break those three up and say, let's keep this, let's take this down, let's build new in here, let's take that out. So that, that's kind of what thinking out of the box is, that we don't need to look at using the whole site. We also don't need to look at maybe refurbishing every single thing there in order to make it usable. Maybe you determine things the town needs and you say it's going to be too expensive to refit this, it would be better to build within the existing and gut things and build all new but meet our needs on that site. So there's a lot of different ways we can look at it, but when you're looking at the entire thing, let's not necessarily look at all three buildings as one. That can be broken up in any number of ways. So that's where we're going with that. Hey, babe. <laughs> You're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> We're all in trouble, bees at the mic. <laughs> B. McMillan, Lakeshore Drive. Um, I want to first of all thank everybody for giving the town uh, listening. Maybe you'll throw out some ideas. I'm sure you will of mine. But I had thought our town in September. We have a great poly arts going with vendors and everything else. I'm wondering if perhaps that poly arts could be over the year because there's so many talented people, not only here in Hopkinton and outside the town. And it's for me, it's personally, it's, I love the poly arts of the fact because I give to students that, you, during, uh, that we've had in our home from other countries, and it's hard to find anything made in the United States. Well, it would be neat to have something that's made in Massachusetts to send to somebody else. Like a crafter's artesian like center. Crafts. Yeah, and that, and that would be, you know, I'm not struggling of looking for something 
-hmm. that's made, well, it'd be neat to have something made to send from Hawkington, whether they spent time in my home and other people's homes way back in the 70s, <coughs> reminder of them. That's one, whether it's a good idea, it's an idea I have. Now, oh, my next idea was with the land that you have, any extra of community garden type thing mm -hmm. in the respect of way back, well, I'm back, I, I don't want to date myself, but way back, thinking in Milton and in Quincy, they had uh, community gardens which people rented and they shared the food. That's another, whether it's way out idea or not. My final crazy idea. <laughs> None is, of your ideas are crazy. <laughs> is uh, a teen center because the kids don't have uh, anything like for dancing and education type thing of well, oh, adult, adult education, that's, I'm shaking like mad. That's okay. So a community uh, center. A community center. This would involve not only the young people, but the older people, the middle people. And that's, it would involve and be a lot of pride in the community. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, B. Again. Thank you. Yeah. Good job. I'm going. <laughs> If you could Hi, raise the Sarah mic. Sarah Mayo, um, Five Hilltop Road. And I, I want to thank you as well. I think it's a great idea throwing it out to the community. This is a building that should stay in the community, in my opinion. It's front and center. It's a beautiful building. And I think all of us would hate to see it converted to something other than community use, homes, senior housing, anything, retail. It should, in my opinion, um, be devoted to the community and children in the community because it's always been a school and therefore I think that um, the kids should be able to use it. Um, I, I agree with what Dee just said um, that a community center, I love that idea and I think that all of us parents could pitch in and um, use our time and our energy if it takes us pitching into paint or to donate furniture or to you know, all be a part of it that we could take pride in. And um, on Marathon Monday, it can be, you know, opened up for visitors. And when people come to Hopkinton on the weekend before the marathon, they don't have anything to do. You know, they look around and you see all these empty storefronts and, and um, we've got all these people. This could be a way to um, bring some attention to Hopkinton in a positive way. We could use it to commemorate the marathon as well. Um, bring the people inside the building to show them Hopkinton pride. Um, and I also was thinking as you were talking about the cost, hasn't all this been determined prior to the new school being built? Why do we have to reinvent the wheel as far as what this building needs? Um, isn't that why we're no, building well, we, the new we, school? We do have those numbers. Um, yeah. Okay, well, let's not start well, over yeah. with all that. Oh, why no, can't no. we and take I, all that we, and say, this is what the building needs? And I, however, some of those, those figures, both for the school and for a possible library, were configured for a school or a library right. use, so they're not applicable, like the schools, to, the classrooms, the bathrooms, for, mm -hmm. for school needs, do they need mass build, school building codes? Same with the library, it came down to things like weight of books. So there are some raw numbers that are usable, but getting really specific, it, it's not applicable because we're not looking at either school or library use. Yeah. Okay, and but there could be some good information there. That oh, oh, there's absolutely great, great information. information. Okay, because that's yeah. what frustrates yeah. me about the town. It seems like every time we do something, we're reinventing the wheel, and it just takes longer, like this gentleman said. Um, and also, because the history of the building is just the, you know, just the um, original building itself, even if we can put our monies toward that part of the building, instead of trying to you know spend our money on expanding the building and you know going overboard why don't we just focus on the historical aspect of the building and use that and then maybe we'd have all this space out back for parking for park for playground for 
you know, garden for other things other than brick and mortar. Right. You know, use the existing historical building and, you know, use the rest of it for can I, can I nice, clarify? beautiful things. Can I ask a clarifying question? Sure. Um, are you saying take down the rest of the building except the historical facade? Um, no, I'm saying that when you showed the um, the additions that were made to the, or the potential additions that could be made to the building and the older part that was built in the 50s or whenever, if if we start expanding, I think that that's going to be a lot more money. Um, if we can put our money towards just the historical portion of the building that was built in the 1920s, then that to me would serve a historical purpose. When we start adding on to it, you're putting money into something that isn't historical anymore. And um, I just think from a um, spending money aspect, I'd rather see it go to the center school itself. I don't know that much about what has been added when, but even if we just take the, like you say, if we completely um, renovate the inside of the old, you know, gut the old building and make it all new, but then you still have the structure itself, focus on the old structure right. and make that a project. That's all I have. Yeah, and, and just one comment about um, we did approach um, the BAA about making it the Marathon Museum. Oh, yeah. It seemed to, we already have a statue in front of the Hoyts. Um, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that's where it all starts. <laughs> uh, however, exactly. Um, so um, they're planning on building one at Legacy Farms. Okay. So, I thought I had, you know, seen that too. Yeah, um, and. and when I first moved here, which was years ago now, there used to be a um, pancake breakfast oh, at, nice. at Santa School uh -huh. in the cafeteria. Um, nice idea. Then 9-11 came. Mm. And since then, Santa School is locked down yeah. um, on Marathon Monday. Mm -hmm. So, um, Well, Marathon Sunday then. Marathon <laughs> Sunday, we can, yes. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. So one more question. Mm -hmm. So you're good at painting? I can paint a wall. <laughs> Roller. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, and Good morning. I want to thank you all um, as well. My name is Beth Malloy. I live at 190 Lumber Street. I guess before we even think of anything else, we have to make this building ADA accessible. It's really just sad looking the way you know we've done it. So I think while we're doing the maybe this, maybe that, <clears throat> we need to get somebody in here to say this is what you need to do right now to make this building accessible to everybody in town. Um, I think that chunk of money could maybe even be voted on this year, perhaps. Um, but I think that's the first thing we need to do before we think about what might go in there. Because if we're gonna save the building, it has to be. ADA, you know, approved. Right. But I also wanted to ask one other thing. Um, the admin buildings that are across the street from the high school, how much is that costing us in rent every year? Do you know? It, uh, it, it's a lot. I, I, it, uh, it's about $300,000. I thought it was like 100. Yeah, and Parks and Recs? Bob, do you have that number, what you pay for rent from Parks and Recs? I believe it's twenty-four thousand a year, for okay. and, our, and our lease is up January the uh, January nineteenth. Okay, so that's a good chunk of change that we can have available mm -hmm. if we move the admin buildings and parks and recs. I mean, to me, that's a no-brainer to save that kind of money, as well as using the parking lot if we're not going to use the the parking lot at Marathon for all our buses because that costs us what? How much does that cost us that we're paying the town of Ashland? With the bus company pays excise taxes to the town of Ashland because the buses are parked there. That is a priority to bring the buses into Hopkinton that we're looking at. The schools are looking at. That would certainly be a possibility, but also the Irvine Todaro property and then also the campus road that we already have somewhere within there. So that will be, the buses will come back. To would Hopkinton. the Irvine property then have to be developed and? Well, it, the, the Irvine Todaro pro property where the school is being built, having a bus parking lot on that that could be accessible through those roads. We didn't make that already part it of has, the plan. It plans? has not been approved by town meeting. It did a proposal was brought forward two years two ago. Two years ago and it needed to go through it was voted not to take action at that time. It needed to go through the Irvine Tadaro property group 
to look at a number of different uses. There is definitely space for it in, I think, definitely a lot of support for it, but we're also looking at would it be better to put it on the existing school property across the street? We haven't determined one way or the other. How Cent long? Center school would be tough to have that many buses unless we paved the parking. The, 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 the spot behind it. Yeah. So how long would it take in a perfect world to find out what it would take to get this um, building up to, you know, it, to be approved by the ADA? And in cutting, in, in cutting the building in, you know, half or in thirds or whatever, <laughs> you're sort of, now you have more buildings that you have to add that on to. So I kind of. The back building, the 1986 <laughs> edition is ADA compliant. Is that where the. Um, the gym is. Okay. So that <laughs> it, it's ADA because well, it's only one floor. No, it's two floors. The classrooms go. There's, there's three classrooms on. There's an elevator each floor. for the, the, a, the other a, building. Yeah, there's, there's, there's only one elevator, and other than that lift thing. Yeah. Correct. Right. So okay. the the middle section is ADA compliant, sort of. Um, it's the front section that the let's call it the second floor of the front section that is not. There's um, because you have to use stairs in order to get to the third floor. Okay. The elevator doesn't go to the third floor. Uh, no, it's the, just if you look at how the building's laid out, it's, you okay. know, there's, there's, there's no third floor on the other two parts of the building. So is that something we can start on now as far as getting quotes <coughs> on that? Well, Beth, um, if you look at those two older sections, the 20s edition and the, and the 50s edition, whatever we do with either of those, the building's probably going to need some work. It, it's They're not in a configuration or a condition to just move right in. So when you decide what you're going to do, you'd have to work on it to bring it up. But there's no point in starting to make changes now to a building that A, is going to be unoccupied, and B, we might bring in another use. It'd be spending money you know, too, too early on in the process. You, you'd spend it when you know what you want to do with it. But would it be wise of us to get the quotes now? Well, the quotes would depend on what the use is the, and how we final, design it. What the functionality you, would you be. You can't get quotes on something if you don't know what your design is. You might reconfigure everything. I mean, you, you need to know what you're doing before you get the quote. Because otherwise, you're just quoting what's there now, and that's probably not the way it's going to be. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I think for the past six months, there hasn't been one meeting that, you know, all these ideas that have come in from the committees and boards that have been great, whether it's been a community center or youth or moving offices, we have that, well, we still have to get cost, but we can't get cost until we narrow down what the, like, final three are because we're paying someone to go out and get these costs and, and we may not end up using them once it comes down to, like, the final few uses that people are most keen on. Um, I love the idea of the teen center. I'm wondering as well in the future if we would need to add another police officer um, because we'd, we'd have to have a detail there uh, just to make sure that things stay the way they should. So is that something we would consider as well as maybe adding another position for a police officer in town? Uh, that I wouldn't. Maybe. I, yeah, I, I wouldn't speak to that. That's, okay. I think that's putting the cart before the horse. Uh, we'd certainly you know, include the public safety people in any discussions about that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, just a comment on the bus parking. And, you know, this forum truly is wide open. There's no wrong ideas or right ideas. But at the same time, um, as you will notice that when the criteria were put up, number the first of the criteria was fit in the neighborhood. And we do need to remember as we look at this that this is not only in the historic district, but it is smack in the middle of a residential neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So whatever use, we have to think how well would that fit. And, um, you know, that's not off the table, but you do have to think of the appropriateness of like 30 buses starting up their engines at, you know, mm -hmm. 6, six o'clock in the morning yeah. Uh, yeah. in the middle of a, of a downtown neighborhood. So, you know, nothing's off the table, but, you know, weigh those in with that one of those criteria in mind. And I know one of the heavy weight is the fact that, you know, we look at center school as almost an extension of the common, too. So what can we, can the things bridge together a lot? Okay. And that you want that to, to fit. But the schools are actively looking at sites yeah, up you. on the school campus ex as it is exists already now in the Irvine to Dara property. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Muriel Kramer, 39 North Street. Um, I'll echo everybody's comments. Thank you guys for putting so much work into this. Um, uh, one of the things on my list was actually what Beth just brought up was the accessibility issue. 
Um, and I do think that, um, that we could bring in some experts and, and uh, really look at the challenges that the structure presents no matter what use we use, and I think that we very often um, approach accessibility as an add-on, mm -hmm. and we have an opportunity here to um, have an S accessibility expert in early, um, and I think that that's very important. I think it's hard for any of us who, are, uh, who, are, who don't, on a daily basis, confront accessibility issues. Um, it's hard for us to do more than just think hard about it, but we don't really live it, we don't really understand it. So I would really recommend early that you get somebody in to, to talk to you about the challenges. Um, that would be easy to do. We have people in town who have been through the center school, they can they could give you uh, a better understanding from their perspective. Um, Before you, um, if I may, um, so would it suffice to do just what, I guess it's a brown color up there, which is the 1928 section, to look at what would it take to to gut it, redo it, and make it ADA accessible? Yeah, speaking just for myself, because you know I'm just here at, for myself. I would start there because that's the that's the priority piece yeah. to preserve for the town. Um, so I would absolutely start there. But any work I did um, in in any part of the building would uh, involve an accessibility expert early, mm -hmm. rather than. Um, <coughs> rather than adding, you know, just having it on the checklist, I would want to embed it into the process from the beginning. I think that that's a different way of, of looking at it. Um, another piece that I think about from, from the historical facade piece um, is, uh, you know, cities do this all the time. Actually, we just did it with the library. There was a really excellent effort to preserve key pieces. Um, I don't know how they did that um, particularly, but we could that's that kind of um, work could be happening now what are the key pieces that we really want to preserve and how do um, city renovations happen where you just don't change the footprint and you you maintain everything on the outside um, and you repurpose the inside use to just you know I, I wouldn't be surprised if we had somebody in Hawkington who had some expertise in that that could on a voluntary basis inform your process I wanted to ask Amy if she could give any input on that I don't know about the financials. No, about um, what pieces of um, center school are considered the historic. So people kind of get oh, so a grasp of what we're saying with the facade. Okay, so um, what's within the historic district purview is the, anything that can be seen from the street from a public way in the historic district. So basically the front. There are two wings on the side of the front from the 1950s, and we had informally, Mike and I, we had talked about this at the historic district, that those are not real important to us to save. But any proposal for a change to the front facade would, would go through our public hearing process. People could give input. But basically, the, the facade that you can see from the common is the part that yeah. is under our purview. I, I seem to remember um, the roof is a piece of that, too, right? It's a yes. historic okay. roof as that well. It can be seen from the front, but yes. the back roof yeah. would not be. Um, so the, the other. Um, one of the things that the, the Land Use Study Committee did when they were looking at um, the Western Nurseries property sale was just brainstorm um, uh, pieces that people wanted to prioritize for preservation no matter what happened. So as I think about your process here, you know, speaking about like the access to the trails and so forth, um, it might be very beneficial to just sort of mark out and list out and have in front of you at all times um, what are some of the things we don't want to lose, if at all possible? So like the trails accessibility would be an example of a huge one. Um, and brainstorm a little bit about the ways, it's not just the marathon, I know the marathon is, is, is the big thing. Be brought up Poly Arts, it's huge. Um, the Jimmy Fund is a, is, a, is a big event, there's a staging area um, that is very meaningful, not just to Hopkinton, but certainly to Hopkinton and, and the state. And, and actually, in that case, sort of worldwide for, for cancer research and, and so forth. So brainstorming pieces that, um, that aren't necessarily pieces of the building, but uses um, and, uh, and items that we want to, if at all possible, we want to uh, maintain. Um, and what was, somebody, I don't think we answered, what was the cost for the bus depot? I, I can answer from perspective of the Green Committee, we asked a decade ago, uh, we worked with the business manager at the time, and at the 
10 years ago it was $110,000 a year that we could save yeah. between uh, getting the excise taxes for parking the buses in town and uh, the less uh, gas for two trips a day, I'm sorry, four trips a day for 25 buses. We now have 26 buses or 27? There are 26 <coughs> on the, the, the largest tier right. is 26. So with the changes in gas prices and in t excise taxes, I'm sure that $110,000 a year number is probably larger. Yeah, it's a substantial savings and, and uh, you know, not, um, not to take shots in any direction, but until it becomes somebody's priority, it, it keeps, you know, it, it is a priority right now. It, well, it's been a priority for a very long time, but it needs to actually happen. We have a couple pieces of property that's a huge expenditure that the town no longer can afford. Uh, just to divert, we're, we're looking at um, at the budget crisis and, and fees at the school that are about to go through the roof. Um, so I, I encourage everybody on this committee, um, but also in concert with the other committees that are looking at it, to just get that piece done. It's, uh, it, we need to keep our buses in town and put that revenue back into the revenue stream here. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Janine LeBlanc, Three Sky Lotter Road. Um, while I love the idea of a community center, I, I do think we need to consider reducing our costs by bringing in town offices. So depending on what the priorities that come back from the surveys and town input, will there be multiple uh, use is considered in that town offices in the front, community center in the back, so that we're yeah. fitting in more yeah. town priorities. Absol and absolutely, needs? and that, okay. Janine, that's a lot of what this is all about: is to find out where these first was where the you know the boards and committees' interests were within the town. Now to get the public, and you know now over 300 people have sent in surveys. We need more to come in and say, okay, here are the buckets that people in the town and people who work for the town or appointed committees in the town have said. These are our top priorities. Then it's like, okay, guys, here's here are the top three or six, and here's what it could potentially cost. Now where are the tops? Right, right. And then also like further planning on like, well, if we do a community center, we can do this one and this one. Right. But if we do town offices, we can only do this other thing and that other thing. Right. So yeah, thinking right. of like what combined we, we choices may we have. Fine from a cost standpoint, the the brown section, you know, and, and I agree completely. You know, everything we can do to preserve. Um, the 1928 school. Um, the back section, as we said, the blue is, is fairly new. Um, mm -hmm. It is ADA compliant. Um, it lacks a furnace, but other than that, you know, it's, it's um, more modern, um, up-to-date construction. The middle section is, from a cost standpoint, is probably the most Not worrisome. So um, mm -hmm. Asbestos in the towels. Um, you know um, a, a number of things that would have to be dealt with if it was refurbished so you know um, following up on your first part so the, the example could be the front part becomes town offices the middle section leaves and maybe becomes parking or maybe even uh, um, picnic tables in a grassy area or uh, you know a, a park like area the back section becomes the uh, under parks and recs in the youth center mm -hmm. okay. uh, which would give us six classrooms and um, the largest classrooms and um, the gym. Great. All right. Thank you. And thanks for all the time you're putting into this. Dottie Farrah to Wallace, 57 Pinecrest Village. I just want to thank everybody. I know this is a lot of uh, time consuming hours on your part, and I really appreciate the input in um, hearing all about this. I really think at this point, I agree with some of the uh, prior speakers that. We're looking at costs now with everything going in. We just have the new school online. We, you know, and I really, I think that center school should remain center school. And we should be looking at how, we, like everybody's talking about, how we can have admin, build, uh, admin in there to save money up the street. Also, Parks and Rec do a fabulous job. They'll be expanding, and they need the room. And then you have it, you have everybody involved and I do like the fact that people have brought up community input like the makers program or have a mentoring program the kids are looking for that kind of stuff in this town I think we got to start looking at how we can save money instead of spend money all the time and how we can utilize experts that live in Hopkinton 
and get a form going. Utilize the minds that live right in this town. We always seem to have to go and s expend, you know, sometimes it's thousands of dollars, sometimes it's $100,000 to get an analysis. When years past, there's been analysis done that can be looked at and then updated to, you know, there's always codes that are changing and everything like that. But I think, and I know it, it's time consuming and everything, but I believe there's people right in this town that could help with this effort if they're approached. And then on, that's on my personal side. <coughs> As chair of the Hopkins Marathon Committee, I just wanted to uh, correct a couple of statements. The BAA is not building the museum. It's 26.2 yes. building the museum. And for the marathon, we have everybody staged at the center school to, you know, all the mobility impaired, the wheelchair athletes, hand cycles, um, all like we have public safety parked around there. So that is utilized. And it's been great over the years. I hope it continues for this town because often people say it's one weekend of the year, but it's also something that puts this place on the map that people look to. But it, in regard, regardless of the marathon, you have poly arts, you have the summer concerts, you have all kinds of races, the Timlin, Live for Evan, the Respite Center. You know, they could utilize that area. And I just think, you know, the community should own it. You know, it should be kept in town. Don't let it, don't let a buyer enter this project. Let that building stay. We need the history of this place. You know, and there's all things you can do. And I think you've brought, brought up a, a lot of great ideas tonight and the people have spoken and, you know, that's so. I'd like to hear more of that, of utilizing some experts right in town and keeping the cost down. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Adi. You. I have a question for Dorothy. Um, in some of the comments, uh, people mentioned a marathon welcoming center, mm -hmm. um, which is a different idea from the marathon museum. Mm -hmm. And I just, uh, wanted to, as a chair, you may not have heard some of this feedback. So uh, what are your opinions on maybe having a, a year round office space or something where people can I would love that there. for our committee, you know, to be able to <laughs> do a lot on my own. But anyway, there is, there are ways that people come into town and there's things going on. And we, and I know Parks and Rec has been trying over the years to beef up that common on the weekend and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think that's, you know, I'm sure it could be made like an office out of, I mean, but, but are you saying like have a community? Build, building, or are you talking about an office? Or? An office where people can come ask questions and, mm -hmm. and pick check up their number. Or. Yeah. Well, that's not, I mean, you have to make it straight that if people have questions, it's the BAA that they should be going to if, they, if their number, you brought up right. questions on their number. That's not something the town is authorized to, you know, speak on. But the town, from a perspective of, you know, people coming into town or moving into town that need, need information of the marathon, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But as far as race information, as far as those details, um, we- They do have an office right there. Right, they have an office on one Ash Street and I would respectfully oh, okay. say yeah. that people should reach out to the BAA, so. I wasn't aware of that one Ash Street. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, but um, I mean, with what Dottie's saying, you know, and complimenting Frank, there, you guys have a tent out there, things like that. Mm -hmm. that this could be something that could be put on the table as a weather contingency that, hey, mm -hmm. you can pick up, you can come in here, you know, we have whatever you need. But the only thing, we, I caution that because so much of that area is used for staging right. of the Boston Marathon. Right. So, I mean, everything down to the footage is staged in that area. I mean, and you guys do a great job. And now with public safety and everything enhanced, you, you know, there's a drone system in the back, there's, uh, you know, there's a lot of things involved that the average person doesn't see. Um, but, you know, and then you have all the buses and everything coming in with the mobility impaired, with the wheelchairs, the hand cycles. It's all staged all right. on a very time definitive, you know, schedule that morning. And that would be, I wouldn't see that that's right. a good recommendation at this point because 
it's just used and um, I mean maybe you know I don't know I'd have to think about that because uh, I just would be concerned about staging for the Boston Marathon there's so many things involved that um, on a year-round basis would any use of any office space help your community oh if there was an extra office um, that we could utilize uh, for meetings and just things going on that would be great but um, I think just I, about every committee in town is that way too. <laughs> right. I mean, it's very hard. I mean, you look at like the new school online, you got the high school up there, and you look at things, and you're still looking around to have your meeting somewhere. I mean, it really shouldn't be that way, but uh, because there's a lot of things, a lot of places should be utilized, but for some reasons aren't. So I would just like this to be kept to the community, to be kept a center school that it's used and the, you know we have a vibrant community that really has a lot of things going on and you know in the future there's more things and I think by keeping that you know footprint over there it would really to be the advantage of Hopkinton thank you thank you Donnie can I just about circle back to a question we had earlier about the administrative offices for the schools that, that not actually for you oh, but okay. just we were talking about the cost that we rent the superintendent's office and those offices across the street the number is actually closer into the 80s of 80 thousands that um just as a point of clarification yeah i, th I think it was a whole bunch of infrastructure that has to go with it, in with it that they needed but, but then, what yeah. we're pa paying annually, annually. Is what we're paying yeah. okay. annually is in yeah. the 80s <laughs> the school are, is renting space across the street from the high school for administrative offices the superintendent and a bunch of others and it is somewhere in the 80,000 closer to 80,000 is what the actual figure is it, it is not I actually confirmed with the superintendent that it's closer to 80 it's a little over 80 but in the 80s yes per year good morning Steve Frobeater 39 sanctuary lane um, chief thank you and uh, the committee members for your service in this role this is I think uh, a, a very important uh, time for the uh, for the character and the content of our town and uh, I think you have a jewel to work on um, and I wish you the best uh, in uh, keeping with the spirit of the meeting um, I, I should uh, I just give you this as a representation I'm the co-chair of the Hopkinton Trails Club that's a club that's a uh, ex officio uh, organization in town and I'm also a director of the Hopkinton Area Land Trust Hall um, at, by by way of reference I'm not representing either one of those in my comments today I'm here as a private citizen uh, but you will see from my comments that my roles on those two uh, impact what I think you ought to consider um, for this building's reuse um, four needs uh, in no particular order and they go like this I think this town I think a lot of towns um, need additional meeting space um, uh, of all kinds of sizes I think this town probably has enough huge meeting space for the few huge meetings we have town meeting and uh, and those kinds of things but it's the uh, the 12 15 20 uh, person rooms that uh, on Monday through Thursday night uh, we compete for um, and we try to uh, like uh, like most other organizations both of the committees that I serve on try to meet <coughs> at some regular time the second Wednesday mm -hmm. of each month or the second Sunday evening of each quarter type of thing and um, and and we bump up against not having enough meeting space and I think we're doing uh, we are positive uh, t town committees and affiliated committees are a positive influence on Hopkinton and what we can do to help them with meeting space so that they can carry out their duties um, would seem to me to be a a wise use of this space and whatever money we allocate for that I also think that it's a um, <coughs> probably is a 
lesser reconfiguring challenge if we make some of those rooms into uh, meeting rooms. Um, uh, and I think we also had a challenge this past year is that a lot of us had been using for committees um, the town hall for meeting and rooms. Then the and I think this is, you know, this past year is a, an exception for what a lot of us have been using for committee meetings. And so we have had a lot of the needs met until this past year. Right. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, the Hopkins and Trails Club uh, meets at the Masonic Lodge. Uh, monthly uh, uh, by the generosity of the Masons and the fact that one of our members happens to be a Mason and has a key. Uh, it <laughs> seems to me it would be terribly convenient if we could have other opportunities. The, uh, uh, the HALT Board of Directors meets quarterly in my dining room. Uh, <laughs> and while we're very happy to host uh, the board meeting, uh, it does limit the ability to have a lot of guests. Uh, second uh, is uh, group office space. The, the, the last set of comments, uh, I, I think some of you see the need for that. Um, these types of affiliated groups and all of the other official town organizations, committees, boards, etc. cetera, uh, uh, I suspect that as you accumulate materials and studies and plans and programs, they will be in the chief's house or garage or in Ken's basement uh, or in your trunk because uh, while the, I'm sure the selectmen uh, gave you their full endorsement for you to do your work, they didn't give you any space, any office um, would be my guess. Uh, so uh, again, uh, probably a very low cost reuse of some of that space could be uh, parceling it off into uh, small little offices that could be assigned, whether they're assigned permanently for permanent organizations or they're assigned on a temporary basis for ad hoc organizations like yours, could be very useful. And, and these are great points. Um, is there anything else? Uh, there are. Um, <laughs> Uh, so that was I had two of four. Two of four, two of four okay. Three of four uh, <laughs> is parking in the near downtown. Uh, enough said. Uh, we comes up all the we time. We need it. Yeah. Uh, it's in every consideration that we make is where are we going to park? <coughs> um, and it seems to me that you have um, have some acreage and uh, possibly some teardown space that could create parking spaces in the near downtown, be very useful. Um, and finally, and th this is why I told you my, uh, my associations with HALT and the uh, Trails Club is um, there are trails, uh, there is a trail that begins there. Yep. It's interconnected to a number of other trails. It could potentially be a connection point for the Upper Charles Trail, which is tremendously important to the community. Um, and so I'd like to see um, in your deliberations that you keep in mind, um, you can do anything with that property, but, um, but don't cut off the access to the trail, possibly the trailhead, possibly parking for the trailhead. No, I think you're absolutely on point on that. And I think any time the trails have come up, and John has mentioned them several times, is that it'd be an enhancement to whatever the property becomes. I think it would be. Um, but thank you. Thank that's you. A clear, thank that's you. a clear priority going forward. That's been right. one of the clear yeah, priorities. Yeah, it's been very much Absolutely. mentioned. We have a few more people that are waiting to make comments. Good morning. My name is Jen Trendle, 31 Chamberlain Street. Thank you so much. Um, it's really amazing to hear all the brainstorming going on today. I realize a lot of it has to do with cost. Um, but a couple of things that I've seen that I've seen today that I thought are some great ideas. One of them being, um, you know, cost, if it, if it works out cost-wise, I would love the idea of breaking it up into two buildings, um, allowing maybe the front part of the building to be for the town offices um, and space for maybe committees and such. Um, also, probably in that building, I was thinking what would look be really nice would be actually a marathon gallery, where it may not be necessarily a museum, but 
actually have many photos and paraphernalia left over from the marathon so that if there are town offices in that building, when people are coming into town, it's a great place to walk into and see um, part of our history there. Um, uh, the back part of the building, I think it's advantageous to keep the gym. If, like I said, it's cost effective. Um, I think that the town and all the other sport um, teams that can use it, that's, you know, I, I think it would be a, at a loss to lose that. Um, the maker space, the gentleman that stood up first, I thought that was a fantastic idea. Um, I would say the other option would be you like could a, utilize it as a maker space. I could, um, right. or even an artist mill, right. where um, you could have some artists that might have offices there that, or or um, workspace there that you could go in and do and work with them or purchase, such as um, I'm not really really about the idea of doing continuation of the poly arts because I think that the reason why poly arts is as fun as it is is because it's a one time day and everybody comes downtown and they check it out um, just in my opinion um, the um, other ideas I love the idea of the trail um, I didn't even know that that's there I run on the trails a lot and now I'm going to go check that trail out um, so thank you. There's a couple of steep spots. So. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. Have you heard of Loon Mountain Race? Oh, I yeah. race that yeah. in the summertime, so I need some training. Um, well, the joke is there's only one heel in that race. Oh, that's true. <laughs> uh, so, I, like I said, the, the trail, that's awesome. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the garden, and the only reason being is because when it was at the EMC Park, it kind of seemed to fizzle out. It didn't seem like a real big... Thing that people needed unless otherwise I don't know that's all I that was my observation from taking my kids to EMC as little kids um, I think parking is definitely everybody's you know one of their priorities so I certainly do not like the idea of putting buses downtown for aesthetic or even taking up the spaces. I understand we're renting space for them right now, but I think that that parking can be used in a lot of other ways. And especially if the building is being used by, um, you know, artists, or if it becomes a rec center, there is parking or ample parking for people to come and go. Um, the other thing is, um, especially if the buildings were to be split, that would allow the, the facade and the newer part of the building to be ADHA compliant because you would probably focus your attention on making sure that that is put in when it is renovated. Great. Um, so I guess, like I said, I'm just reiterating a lot of the opinions and our ideas. So like I said, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. A couple more and then we would have one final uh, um, exercise to do so we're trying to get out of here by noon time. So I'd like to thank the committee. Thank First you. off, my name is Paul Gadudis, uh, 342 Wood Street in Hopkinton. Thank you. I'd like to thank the committee for all of the work that you put in here. I, it's a monumental task, I'm sure. Um, I'd like to address myself to a couple of points that were made earlier, if I correctly understood them, and that was the present building layout is about 51,000 square feet in area. 52,000 square 52, feet. 52,000. <coughs> That's we, all the buildings together. Yes. Do we know what the present requirements space-wise are for the rental for the school admin? Significantly smaller than that. I don't know what the actual size of the building is, but it's not. It's the yellow building across from the high school. I'm, I'm aware of that, okay. but I wasn't sure of what the space requirements are because it seems that one of the points that was made earlier for potential use for this building is to backfill the school committee and save now we're told correctly told eighty thousand dollars a year in rental fees and one of the other potential candidates for it is the um, parks and rec do we know what the space requirements are for parks and rec currently about 2500 square feet okay very small for comparison. office space not for, for office space but program. just a little clarification uh, park and rec is planning to continue their programming for the summer camps in the gym area and the playground out back as we previously had. Okay, so any future use of that building could incorporate a, that continuation mm -hmm. for Parks and Rec. 
our, our commission has been very active with the town manager as long as two years ago to go ahead and pursue that back portion for our admin space and programming which potentially cannot be accommodated with the school gym space okay I think everybody knows gym space is at a pro premium here so we're actively looking forward to optimizing that investment but currently your requirements are approximately 2,500 square feet for admin space correct and summer program space which we could potentially incorporate into any future use for this building correct. the gym space or whatever my correct. point is leading to this we have a lot of space around town that is presently owned by the town uh, I say that um, down on Fruit Street we have a building that was uh, vacated recently by the Department of Public Works. There is an office building there that, if I had to guess, is somewhere around 15, 1,600 square feet of space, could be used for an admin purpose. There is a, there is a uh, metal building there that is also vacated by the Department of Public Works that could potentially backfill a town administrative use into or even for storage or equipment or whatever you have um, I'd like to also bring up the commentary of the buses uh, Frank Dursa if I remember right you said the rental fee was approximately hundred and ten thousand dollars the, the annual cost if you look at uh, the excise tax that's not going to our town plus the additional gas that's used for the fleet of buses okay is, would result in savings a decade ago of one hundred and ten thousand dollars a year. It's probably higher now. So with undoubtedly, but it's not a. It's not a. It's um, do we know what the distance is from the town of Hopkinton to that rental space in in Ash Lane for buses? It's something like a eight miles per trip per bus four times a day. Okay, so, so is it conceivable that you could utilize that bus space down on Fruit Street? It is within the town. It is three miles away from the center of town. Save one hundred and ten thousand dollars <coughs> plus. Yeah. But um, yes, uh, it's, it is a good idea. Uh, but I think part of the problem was at the time uh, that wasn't available, and still may not be available. And it is near a well system. And. Uh, I think there my commentary to the well system is we had the Department of Public Works uh, down there uh, for the <laughs> last two years can I comment on the, the preferred sites for the bus right now given the partially the proximity to the schools are really the Irvine Todaro properties which we already own and then also the school property across the street where the, the loop road is that we're looking at very seriously in moving forward uh, sooner rather than later and that I think that would be the core the, of the schools. Yeah. It's, and it's less mileage too. And I think Rick could speak on this: is that our core focus for the whole committee is just on Center School itself, where the reuse would be. So we're not taking into consideration other pieces of property in town. Yeah. I agree. That's the job of the committee. Mm -hmm. But these are ancillary points that surround that, where space within the town that presently <laughs> exists could be used and save the town money. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, one final comment, just, um, and I realize it's not within the auspices of this committee, but any potential use of this building in the future, there are energy efficiency programs that are available yep. to assist or largely offset any costs in upgrading energy uh, use in a building. And they're available since Eversource is the electric and gas company uh, in this area. They're available from them. And I'd highly recommend that you get in touch with them. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Samantha Dings, Three Wordy Circle. Um, if you've ever been to the Natick Farmers Market, you notice that it is a year-round <coughs> farmers market. Um, June through October, they sit on the Natick Town Green. Um, November through May. They move into a building right next to the town green. Hmm. hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might be a possibility as far as priority two, you know, working with the folks who run the Hopkinton Farmers Market to possibly make that a more of a year round thing for people to be able to take part in as a community. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, interesting. Hey, Dale.
Dale Danahy, 25 East Main Street. Um, I have three generations of family that went to center school. My mother, myself, my children. Um, as far as ADA compliancy, uh, my son went in a wheelchair and with crutches for five years at that school. The only part of the school he couldn't go to is the third floor. So before you put tons of money into you know, ADA compliancy, a lot of that building is compliant. It, it, you would need to add ADA compliant bathrooms for sure. But if you use the third floor for storage, which I, I saw that there was a need for storage, then you wouldn't need to have people up on the third floor. Before you consider taking those 12 classrooms and, and demolishing that for a pocket park or whatever else, I would caution that we just named off, you know, 30 different organizations that could use that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I would say that is compliant, <coughs> um, that it could be used by a ton of places, a ton of, I mean, a ton of uh, organizations, clubs, et cetera, in town. I'm on the uh, family day committee and we meet at my house, we meet at somebody else's house because the library is closed the times that we'd like to meet. So this building might not might be closed as well. It might be cost prohibitive to open it every single night, but um, as town boards, we're looking for space. So that could be used as well. So um, I would like to see priority one. I, I think as a um, town, we've made mistakes in the past. We let the, um, the old high school go. Oh, that why, why would we want to take care of an old building? It needs so much. And now we, you know, I've heard over the years, I wish we had the old high school back, which is right up on Main Street. So this is a beautiful building. It's got historic. It's been in town. I would hate to see it developed. I would like the town to keep it. I think, you know, there's a lot there that could be used as it is. So before we demolish, you know, um, part of it, I, I think the, the biggest problem, as Mr. Terry said, is you can't make a decision without prices. So we need to move ahead. We need to move ahead quickly. Because if anybody remembers years ago, I think that's the second or third gym floor we've put in because over Christmas break, we shut the, pow the, the <coughs> temperatures down a little too much. And pipes broke, pipes uh, squirrels burst. Squirrels one year. Squirrels was one, <laughs> and, yes. and one was, was froze, frozen from pipes. Yes. So correct. Um, so a building that's vacant is going to be an issue. And it wasn't even vacant then. No. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah, I, we, we need to move ahead. We need to get going. And I appreciate that, you know, we have input and I appreciate what, what you guys are doing. You've got a big task ahead of you. Full steam ahead. <laughs> and one more comment. The, the, <laughs> um, Beth Fitchie, 36 Ash Street. Um, I appreciate Claire's comment about the neighborhood because we are in the neighborhood, very close. Um, I won't go over parking, but I can tell you that we, I'm on the corner of Fenton and Ash, so it's about a block. Um, but the parking is there. It's on our lawn, it's in front of our house, it's unsafe, children crossing the street. So whatever goes there, um, ample parking would be very important um, to the neighborhood. Um, and as you mentioned about the buses parking there, that would be terrible. Um, you know, we, it is a neighborhood. It is a school, but it is a neighborhood. Um, some of the ideas are great. The art spaces, the classes, the farmer's market, all of that um, is very useful. And I guess my um, overlying um, sentiment is to keep it within the town, to keep it in control of us, not to sell it outside of the town. Um, whatever use you decide is good for the most people is what I would be for. So thank you. Okay, we've got uh, one major thing that we would like to get your input on. Um, one of the things this committee has been trying to do is determine what the criteria is to evaluate all the possible uses of which we got a, a few more that brainstormed here today. And so to help us evaluate the criteria, we're passing out a, a, a sheet and it's actually on the fr first page, there's two pieces to it. One is a forced rank, one to 10, of where you are in the criteria. The criteria are put on the sheet randomly as this committee thought about them over a bunch of meetings. So it's, it's, there's no importance to the order f that we have determined so far, but quite frankly, there is an importance to the ranking. Some of these criteria are more criteria more important than others. 
And so we'd like the public's input here tonight to help us by ranking those from 1 to 10. The second part of the exercise on the first page is the weighting factor. Some of these criteria are more important than others. They might be lower on the list, but another way we're trying to look at this is, you know, is this 100% or is this criteria worth 10% or anywhere in between? So if you can kind of put the importance in a, in a, in a, a, uh, on the weighting factor for this criteria, that would also help the committee establish the criteria. And then we left a, a blank for optional comments. If uh, you don't like it or like it, and there's also two blanks at the bottom to, to add to the criteria. We're not saying that we got them all, and I'm not sure we got them all perfect, but that's where it is. The back side of the sheet is you heard a lot of reuse ideas here today. What are your top three? And we recognize that this is without a lot of facts and information and certainly no cost. But this is just to try to give us some guidance as where we should be going. Because we don't want to spend a lot of time and effort evaluating a reuse idea that, quite frankly, doesn't have any legs. And you know we don't want to waste time on, on things that are really low on the community's priority list. So that will help us that there. There's a reminder that we would like you to all complete the questionnaire that's available online or in, in mail-in. And then also, if you have any comments on the process, we left a wide open space for that. In the bottom is optional contact information and that is optional, but if you want to get notified of our uh, hearings and, and meetings, uh, leave an email and we'll put you on, on, on the contact list. And at the back of the uh, area, uh, the back of the room, we have paper copies of the uh, questionnaire that was in, in the Hopkinton Independent or that's available online. Uh, and so if you can complete that again today, <coughs> that would be great. And yes? Is this form also going to be available online? We had not planned on it to be online. Uh, we yes, yeah. Okay. This was actually, the way it was kind of set up was the thought was that it would be impact from the first public forum, what came out, and then there'll be a second public forum. And we would say, you know, that we participate in this forum. Uh, my only comment to that would be that I'd like some time to look oh, okay. at this and to comment on that. Yeah. yeah. That, that makes sense. Yeah, okay. Um, The school is, is zoned residential. Residential, yeah. Okay, once you've completed that, that's going to conclude our forum for today. Uh, please uh, look uh, online at the town website for our public meetings and for our upcoming public forums. We'll uh, try to get it out through Twitter and through the mm -hmm. town website, uh, all our meetings and, and any information that we do have. And uh, I do thank you all so much today for coming out and giving us all your vision. Uh, a lot of this is, is very important to us and hearing from you in person as well as uh, through the surveys that we've been receiving, it is going to help us be able to narrow down, with, narrow down our focus to be able to start drilling down on what the town sees as the future use for center school and then that'll help guide us in getting the cost estimates so that we can start to come back to the uh, to the public in the town and say this is what it's looking like people want this is what it's looking like it's going to cost and that ultimately will be the final driver uh, in, in my opinion so once again thank you for coming out and uh, please stay in touch with us mm -hmm.